Hey guys, it's Christy. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you how I was able to transition from my end of summer tablescape to my fall tablescape using pretty much the basic setup that I already had for my end of summer tablescape. So all I did was make a few changes and some additions to what I already had going on and I'm going to share with you today exactly how I did that and kind of what the cornerstone was of being able to do that in the first place. Now I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you that hopefully will help you in your decorating especially as the seasons are changing now and we're going to be going through several seasonal changes and holidays things like that. So some kind of principles that maybe you can use to help you with your decorating and making changes for the different holidays and seasons. This video is part of the DIY Mommy's Fall DIY and Decor Challenge. Christina from DIY Mommy puts on this challenge several times a year. This is the fall edition, so there's gonna be quite a few YouTubers participating in this. I'm going to leave the links for Christina's channel and for the playlist in the description box below. So make sure you check that out when you're done watching this video. If you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and join our community. Everything I use from the napkin rings to the burlap flowers, to my plates and placemats, everything for my end of summer tablescape, I knew was gonna work perfectly for fall with just a few additions. So that would be my first tip for you. Invest in things that you know will take you through multiple seasons. And even if you have to pay a little bit more for those items, it's worth it so that you can use it for longer periods of time throughout the year. And then you don't have to buy as much overall because you've invested in these pieces. Since I already had the basic setup for my place settings that would work for either summer or fall, all I needed to do was bring in a couple of little additions to really make this say fall. So you'll notice I added the little pumpkin soup bowls to the place settings. These came from Home Goods. I also added the little galvanized leaves that say grateful and thankful to the napkin ring setup. And just to add one last touch of fall to the place setting, I decided to use these galvanized pumpkin name cards from Pier 1. For the actual name cards, I'm just using these brown envelopes and cards that I picked up at Michael's and my white chalk pen to write the names on them. I thought it would be a really cool idea to use the envelope as the place card, and that way I could write a little note inside to each person sitting at the table and make it a very personalized, special thing for them. So that would be tip number two. Do something that will make it personal for your guests and even if it's just your family even if it's just you and your husband like sometimes it's just me and Whitney most of the time let's just be real it's usually just me and Whitney I just thought it would be a nice little touch for everybody to get a personalized card that you wrote for them and let them know you were thinking about them and that you are happy to have them at your dinner table so tip number two is to do something to personalize your table for your family and guests I decided I wanted to do something very similar for the centerpiece that I already had in my end of summer tablescape. I really liked the look of that and so I wanted to replicate that for fall. So I was thinking of just using my trifle dish and doing a flower arrangement with some type of filler in between like I did for the other and then the other day my friend and I were shopping at home goods and I found this beautiful wooden bowl this thing is gorgeous guys I hope the camera does this justice because it is absolutely gorgeous when I saw it I knew that I had to use that as part of my tablescape so I decided I was gonna go ahead and stick with the plan but then also figure out how to incorporate this beautiful wooden bowl I'm starting with my wooden bowl and then I decided to put my trifle dish inside of it. I'm just securing the trifle dish to the wooden bowl with my museum putty. That way I know it's secure but then I'll be able to remove it without having any damage at all to my wooden bowl. I'm doing the same thing with my vase that's going to go inside my trifle dish. I'm going to secure that again with the museum putty. It will hold that in place and I don't need to worry about and that. And I'll just remind you guys for this particular arrangement Ideally, the vase that's gonna go inside my trifle dish would be the same height or shorter as the trifle dish. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I'm kind of making do the best that I can without it. But I do kind of like the nice tiered look that I'm ending up with. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and fill in my bowl. I'm just using some paper and I'm just balling it up and putting it into my wooden bowl just to kind of fill up and take up a lot of the space so then I don't need to put as much on top because I'm gonna put some things there that I want to be able to sit on top of it. 
The next thing I did was fill in the space between the vase and the trifle dish with some vase filler. I found this at Home Goods, and what I loved about it was the colors. I love the neutral colors. It worked perfectly with my color scheme that I'm doing throughout my house this year. I like that it even had the little silver and gold tones in it as well. The only thing I didn't like about it is that it's fragranced, and I don't like to bring artificial fragrances into my house, but this was just too perfect for the colors, so I decided to go ahead and just bite the bullet on this one and do it anyway. The next thing I'm going to do is take some more of the vase filler and just kind of spread it around on top of the paper so you're not going to be able to see the paper through. And then I had also found these little white pumpkins. I thought these would be perfect to bring in another little rustic touch. And then the white will not only tie into my white dishes, but also some of the other white decor that I have in the background. I'm just lining these pumpkins along the edge of my bowl. Once I had that done, I could start working on my flower arrangement. Now, ideally, I would have actually gotten more flowers and tried to have them fill out and cover a little bit more to where they look like they were coming straight from the trifle dish, but the store didn't have that many, so I'm just using what I have. I'm using these colors because I thought they were fall, and they went really well with the decor. I think they're gonna tie into the gold picture that I have in the background, to the wood tones that I'm using. And the yellow, I like that it just kind of brightens things up a little bit and then the cream berries are just tying into all of the other cream elements I have going on. Once I had that done, I decided that it looked a little bare and I wanted to add a couple more elements to it. I had some vase filler that had these cream boards and pumpkins and pears in it. So I'm just using that around the corners. The other two pumpkins that I'm using here with that, the cream one and then the brown one, both were picks that came from TJ Maxx. And I thought that worked well together and tied in all of my colors. So I just moved the candles that I was using before to the center of that and just set it with a leaf and two little pine cones, which also came from some vase filler that I had. I did change the tea light candles that I had in there, which were real candles, to these flameless ones because these are some I just ordered on Amazon with timers. I don't need to turn them on and off every day. They come on at five and turn off at 11, so they're perfect. Tip number three is to use colors to help keep things looking cohesive. In my tablescape and the background decor, you'll notice that I'm using lots of the same color tones and color schemes because that helps to bring a cohesive look to the space. And not only is it making the tablescape and the background decor look cohesive, but it's working with the rest of my home, the paint colors and decor colors as well. So tip number three is to use your color scheme to create a cohesive look. So again, for my background decor, I wanted to use a lot of what I already had, just make a few changes to my summer tablescape, and then also bring in a few things that represent fall. guys I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I was able to transition from my end of summer tablescape to my fall tablescape by just making a few simple changes and additions if you picked up some tips and ideas type tips down in the comments below so I know that you picked up something along the way I love to hear what tip you like the best and what you think you might be able to use for your own decorating remember to go check out Christina's channel and the playlist for this collaboration I'm gonna leave the links in the description below and if you like my video please give it a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed I would love to have you join us so hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications that way you'll make sure you're always in the know when I come out with a new video thanks for watching guys bye